Hey everybody, how's it going? I got the third of these articles from mtgrocks.com going over some crazy bets on the MTG Finance subreddit. And, you know, the, the hallmark of these is that people buy a whole lot of copies of a really cheap card and then they hope to somehow make money, but it's kind of that dot, dot, dot step in between. But refreshingly, this first one today is somebody who is not down 100% on their investment, like virtually all the rest of these. So this guy, he bought Turok Dreadcanter, and, you know, he said it's versatile, and he kind of makes some decent arguments. And um, said he got 100 copies, $2.50 each, and that $10 is about where he thinks it could go, and that he would buy listed at seven to eight bucks. And that's really good. It shows that he's actually thought about like, how do I get out of this investment and make some money? And so probably he understands the limitations of buy list, how it works. So he's actually encountered the problems of trying to ship hundreds of copies of individual cards to individual sellers before. And, you know, if, if we go and look at the current price of the card, so these are the two versions that he shows in his photograph. And wow, if his basis cost is 250, these are about seven bucks each right now. So, you know, he's done pretty good so far. Um, if he were to just go sell these individually, you know, he'd pay about $1.50 of shipping and fees on every single copy. And he had a, a basis of 250. So he'd make about $3 profit on each of these hundred copies. So he, he'd net about 300 bucks. Now, if he goes and buy lists them, it's actually better i think i'll explain why um you know he'll get three dollars and 84 cents for the regular version four dollars and 48 cents for the full art version and i did some real simple math just kind of estimating the number of copies of each from his picture and you know that'd be about 400 dollars gross this is well under one pound of shipping weight so he can ship it tracked to tcg player for about four bucks and accounting for his 250 and fifty basis he'd make about $145 profit just by unloading all of them today. And I, I think that's definitely what he should do, not spend countless hours of time packaging up singles or maybe a rare four set and selling them like that where they're not tracked, where you're going to get some percentage of scumbags who just claim they never got it. And, you know, get out while you're ahead and enjoy it because, man, in, in the world of all these crazy specs, as they call them, uh, it's really rare to not have a 100% loss. So kudos to you. So the next one, Ignite the Future. Uh, I like the card. Uh, okay, I mean, you know, that's a good reason to buy uh, eight or 10 copies. You know, I like Curse Scroll. And I, I don't know, I've bought like 30 near mint copies of it because I like the card. But um Buying 921 copies because you like the card, I I don't know about that. Now he says he only paid about 35 cents each. And now that it's been reprinted, he doesn't ever expect it to gain value. So he would sell them at any price point and take a loss. Here's the problem. I don't think he can sell them at any price point and take a loss. I think to sell them either individually or um, through a buy list, he has to incur more costs. And so let's go look. So 14 cents, but you know, individual copies close to a dollar, you know, after you pay the the individual shipping. So if he sells all these off individually, um, he'll get about a dollar gross off of each one. And then he'll pay about 75 cents for shipping and fees for selling a single card at low cost. And then he'll have uh, his basis cost. And so he's still going to maybe break even, maybe still lose money, depending. It's hard to say exactly. Um, I think he'll probably still lose money off of these. And something else I really wondered about with this this guy's investment, the the headline price for these, not including shipping, is, you know, 14, 20 cents. And he said his average cost was 35 cents. And it makes me wonder if some of the people doing these kind of speculative bets are paying shipping on the front side and then they've got to pay shipping on the back side to send it again and they just kind of don't realize that so i don't know um maybe that's how his basis cost is so high or maybe the value of the card has gone way down i i zoom this out 
as far as the data go and you know it just depends on when he acquired the card so i don't know um but yeah he's he's basically down a hundred percent about if he sells them individually now if he buy lists them uh what's the buy list for this card one cent so he can take his 921 copies buy list them for nine dollars and 21 cents and uh now 921 copies is going to weigh nearly four pounds to ship and so you're going to pay a little over 10 bucks to ship that in the u.s so he will actually incur more costs than the buy list will pay him to ship them to tcg player and there's just not enough depth in these buy lists there's only about 200 copies desired by all stores on tcg player so like i said there's no way for him to get out of this without spending additional money and really my advice at this point would be throw them in your fireplace and use them to help heat your home one night this winter because there's there's never going to be a future in this bet and the third one alchemist gambit um he said he got the idea from a discord server with other magic investors man i can't i i can't even imagine um and i looked at the card and it was like time walk or time warp this the one from tempest it was like time warp plus final fortune only like much worse um and so he says he bought 236 copies the normal version he bought for 36 cents and he thinks the normal version will get to about a dollar and you know if it gets to a dollar that would more than double the investment and again this is a person who doesn't realize when it gets to a dollar you have 75 sh cents of shipping and fees and then you have your 35 cent basis so if it only goes to a dollar, you've still lost money. It has to go to about a dollar sixty-five for you to pay your fees, pay your shipping, pay your basis cost, and have a profit equal to your basis on a card that's thirty-six cents. So the card has to nearly quintuple or quadruple in price from where it is, where he bought it, for him to get that kind of to double his investment. And where is it now? Well, it's it's a little bit above where he bought it on this the basic version so yeah i mean it's it's a long way from uh a dollar 60 but you know maybe he could get there i just don't know i'm not going to call this one a hundred percent loss maybe it's a hundred percent loss right now but um he could get lucky he, he does say that when something else rotates out of standard later in 2022 that he thinks this could start moving but again most of these bets, like you see, two out of three on here and in the other articles that I covered, um, almost all of these speculative bets on on the MTG Finance subreddit, they're, they're almost always just throwing money away. And again, it comes down to the fixed costs of transacting the cards on the purchase and the sale. So, you know, stay away from this kind of stuff. There's a lot of great things you can invest in that will not eat you up on shipping and fees invest in those instead. So if you like this kind of thing, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and join me on Final Trade. Thanks a lot.